Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to uh, Fly Time Tutorials with Snake River Fly. Uh, this video, we're going to talk a little bit about stoneflies, stonefly nymphs in particular. Um, you know, the classic, I guess classic now, you know, it was revolutionary 15 years ago when we first saw it, but the Pat's rubber leg. You know, you see them tied a million different ways. You know, they're in every fly shop in the West. It's because it's a great pattern when it gets wet. It, it um, you know, looks dang, dang near real. And, Sky's the limit, you can do a lot with them. But what you find nowadays, unfortunately, is seems like as a lot of these things have drifted away from you know what their original intent, the way they looked. You know, originally stone flies are, you know, they've got a classic taper in the back, they're pretty flat, and then through the thorax area and the head, you know, they've got some mass to them. And a lot of these rubber legs that you see, you know, and we've got some in our bins too that are, are you know, definitely starting to lean towards real skinny stuff. You know, here's kind of a classic. And yeah, you know, these catch fish, um, but I think we kind of drifted away a little bit from, you know, the classic big, heavy, chunky, trying to imitate that large stonefly nymph. And so we're going to go ahead and tie one for you. Um, it's kind of a hybrid in between, you know, maybe a Montana stone. Um, pattern from you know back in the 80s and uh, Pat's rubber leg so we'll go ahead and get started here and uh, show you our version so this is the bug um, you can tell you got some more girth to it in the thorax region the body tapers nice I mean this is a really big nymph especially the Terranarsis the salmon fly you know that comes off in June and July out here in the West I mean these nymphs can be in the water for up to three years and they get pretty sizable so you know we're trying to imitate that size dynamic and not only that in order to get these to sink to the bottom where they're the most effective typically is going to rely on some sort of lead you know we typically use 0.35 um, which is you know kind of the bigger lead that you can find out there and you know we put a bunch of it on here and we'll show you that but another thing that I think is important when we're talking about you know nymphs and especially stonefly nymphs is that you're going to have lighter ventricle coloration um, lighter bellies than you are on your dorsal or your top of your bug and so we're addressing that with with this fly too you know we're size shape weight and we're getting that two-tone um, variation and the one we'll tie for you now we're even going to do a little split case so go ahead and get started with it so we're going to start with a, this is a number four, but you know, four down to shoot, number tens, this pattern could be adapted all the way across the, the spectrum. Um, but this is for the big Terranarsis, the big bug. So I've got some .35 lead here. Um, you know, you could use uh, non-toxic lead as wire as well. Uh, the .35 is the bigger size. I'm just going to go ahead and start back two thirds of the way back and wrap that lead on there. We're going to build a big foundation. Um, these flies fish best right on the bottom. I mean that's where they live when that water temperature starts warming up in the spring, 55 degrees or so. These nymphs start crawling towards the edges, mid-river structure. They climb out and they go through their metamorphosis into the winged mature adult. So we want the nymphs to be right down on the bottom. So we put a pretty good chunk, you know, maybe four inches of uh, 0.35 lead in here. And we just got a 6 aught black uh, semper waxed here. And I do like this curved hook. It kind of gives you that natural bend and it tends to uh, give the fly some, some tumbling, some mo better movement anyway. So I'm going to start my thread right behind the back of the lead and just secure my thread in and work my way back right above the barb and now we're going to take a little bit of uh, Montana fly uh, this is great stuff barred silly legs this is brown and black and we're going to take a section of that we're going to make our short tail tails on these guys are shorter than the antenna so let's put that on that side get a couple laps wraps up thread over that and now take the long part here fold it down on my side and that'll give us our fork tail now I'll just go ahead and cut this off now and we'll save that for the antenna okay so now we're going to work our thread up through and go through this lead wire 
It's nice to come at it from the back. That's the way I wrapped it. So my thread wraps are gonna fall in the gaps in between this 0.35 lead um, and secure that to the hook so we don't get any sliding up and down. And I'll also use my thread to build a little ramp and a little stop here at the front of the lead. So when we're building our body, we have a little smoother transition. And now we'll come back through. Eh, skipping my way through because I know I've already got it anchored pretty well here. Now we'll take our body material. This is just a medium um, black sparkle chenille. I mean, you could use brown, you could use tan, you could use olive, you could use everything in the book. Um, really, for that matter, you wouldn't even have to be a sparkle, but we kind of like a little bit of flash. Um, so I've got about six, eight inches of this. You know, after you tie a half dozen of them or some, you kind of get the exact length that you need, but better to have a little more than, than not enough. I'm just going to use, I'm not even going to strip the tag off like we do a lot of times. I'm going to lay this chenille right in behind this lead, and that's going to fill this gap for me. Just come back like so, right to where the tail starts, and now work my way back up to about the middle of the fly, right where that bend is. So now we're just going to build our body, the abdomen, the back end of the fly, keeping my thread wraps pretty, or my chenille wraps pretty close here, building a big, durable profile. Now I've got it to the halfway point here. That's where my thread's been waiting for me. What I'm going to do is just pull it up to the top. I'll get a few wraps to anchor that chenille down and maybe a few wraps in front of it and what we're going to do is we're going to pull this chenille and make a loop right here and I want my loop to be long enough to come out the front this is going to be our become our wing case okay so just making sure that I have enough of those two going back to, to make it to the end of the hook okay so just pinch that down and now on the the nymph that we don't do the split case on, you would take this tag in piece, okay, and put it back here as well, and that way you would use all three pieces to make your wing case here. Um, but we're going to go ahead and put a split in this one, like this guy's emerging. So we'll cut that spare off, and now we're going to tie in just a little bit of the pumpkin color crystal flash chenille. And you could do any big estaz here, orange. And I'm going to tie this in in the place of where that tag end of that third piece of chenille would go for my wing case. So I'm just going to tie that in right here on top. Same tie in point where we ended our body. And secure this down. And we'll use that to be our emerging insect. Now we're going to go ahead and take our thorax color. This is just some of our uh, big cat scat. We have this on the website, half dozen different colors. This particular one's cheetah. It's just a little bit bigger variegated chenille. Um, Multi-tonal, it's it, about every three inches it changes colors to two or three different colors. Anyway, real good looking color for the thorax of one of these uh, stoneflies. I'm going to Take and use some of the orange stuff there, so I'll just cut. So you have the bangle tiger. Oh, this is the bangle, sorry. But the package was the cheetah. Yeah. So this is the bangle, has a little bit of orange in it. And I've stripped just a little bit right off the tip so I can tie it in clean. And I'll tie that in as well. So now we have our two pieces of chenille from the original body, our uh, little bit of crystal. Uh, chenille in here for our split case and then this to wrap our thorax. So now we'll go ahead and we'll add our rubber legs and we're going to put our rubber legs coming right out of this center spot right here. A lot of different ways to tie the Jimmy, uh, the Pat's legs or the Jimmy, Jimmy legs um, fly. You can tie them in one at a time. Um, they kind of tend to track all over different directions. It's a lot of work. Or you can tie all three of them in at the same place. Use your chenille to divide those, and I'll show you how to do that. But uh, for the legs on this one, we're just using our um, fall hopper laser legs. And so I've got three pieces here already trimmed. I've cut them 
you know, maybe two, two and a half inches long. I've got them all three in my, in my hand here. I'm just going to come forward just a touch right where I want my legs to base out of, right where that thorax would be. And I'm just going to lay them across the top and right in the middle, dividing equal parts on this side, equal parts on this side. I'm just going to do a front, my side, back, your side wrap, diagonal wrap. And now without letting go of this side, I'll come over and do the opposite wrap. So we get these X wraps going here. This would be a good place, you know, if I'm tying a bunch of these, this is where some head cement's going to go as well um, to make sure these legs are locked in. But you can see we have them all tied in in that same spot. And I'll just move my thread forward about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch behind the hook eye. Turn that to the camera here so we can see the top view. You bet. So here's what you're looking like in the top. You've got your thorax chenille that we tied in last. Prior to that, we tied in our split case crystal chenille. Prior to that, we made our loop of our medium black flash chenille. Okay, so now we'll take the last thing we tied in, which is our Bengal tiger. And we're just gonna wrap this one wrap where the abdomen ended and the thorax started. Now I'll take one of these rubber legs and I'll pull it back and I'll come in front of that. Same thing on the other side, I'll take one of these legs and pull it back. I'll take my middle leg and I'll make a spot for that to go in between those two. Hand it over to the other side, same thing. And I'm just spacing these legs out with each one of these wraps. Okay, so we've covered up that lead and we've got our legs separated. I'll go ahead and show you a top view of this. You can see how the legs have all separated and fanned out from that center point. So a little bit easier, a little cleaner method um, to get those finished. So I'm right in front of my lead about an eighth of an inch behind the hook eye. I'll go ahead and, and trim off this big cat scat and flatten it a little bit. I'll do a couple maintenance wraps in here just to clean things up. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and take our crystal chenille and we're going to pull that right down the center. I'll show you from the top. Right down over the front of that um, cat, big cat scat. And we're just going to tie it in. With a good half a dozen wraps and then we'll do the same thing. We'll pinch that back and we'll get some good tight wraps in there. That's just going to bind the end of that stem, make it a little tougher. We'll save that for the next one. Okay, so now we have our little loop of chenille back here that we left. And this crystal chenille tends to lay relatively flat if you look at it. So you've got, if I lay it like so, more sticks out on the sides than does on the top and the bottom. And so I've tied it in that way so it lays flat. And so what I want to do with my looped crystal chenille here is I want to sneak and drop it right down on top of my legs and around that, that uh, crystal chenille and that'll get those edges of that to pop up like we've got a little emerging, uh, a case emerging right here or a the case, the wing cases are splitting open and the adults coming out of there. So go ahead and tie this down, that loop of thread. And now we'll tip it forward down like this. So you can see the top and you can see, you know, how the one went down each side right here. And there's our loop left over. We'll just tie that off. And now we're going to finish this bad boy with our Montana Fly Company striped flex floss and do our antennas out the front just like we did the tail fold them, fold them back get a look at it from the top and now we'll just finish our head here. I like to lift the antennas up get one or two wraps to separate those rubber legs or the antenna from the eye there just to give me a little room for tippet to 
not get stuck in there. And now just kind of finish the head up. Probably could have came a little farther forward with my chenille, but not that big a deal. You're going to lose it in the rocks anyway. <clears throat> or in a big trout. But this is a little bit more what we're thinking of when we're talking these western stone flies. I mean, even the golden stones and the squalas, you know, they have some beef to them. That's why fish like them so much. Now let's get away from calling a little teeny skinny non-weighted Pat's rubber leg your go-to bug. And let's get some beef in them and uh, get them down where they need to be fished. So you can see we've got the the split coming out the top. You wouldn't have to split it like that. You know, we, uh, we also tie them without the split, right? So here's same thing without the split case. A little lighter belly on that one. Different colored rubber legs. But you've got some size to them, some girth, right? And you've got the dorsal coloration on the bottom. Anyway, this is, uh, you know, Snake River Flies hybrid Montana Jimmy, rubber leg pat, Montana pat, or something. You can trim the legs however you want. I usually leave them pretty wild, let them, let them buck. There you have it. Montana pat, snake river fly. Thanks a bunch.